Hello again, everybody. Um, I'm just going to today show you me doing test tube maintenance with Queen D. Um, if you're an experienced ant keeper, you'll probably know all of this, but you know, I like to keep things basic ants. So yeah, this is the end of the test tube. You can see it's uh, got a lot of um, trash that they've dumped down the end. Um, so the first thing I do is put a piece of white paper underneath so it contrasts the ants better against a background. I can keep an eye on like that one, whether or not there are any ants coming down. Um, so I just wait, I waited for a, a quiet period um, and then you could just take the cotton out and um, in my starting equipment video, I've said get a small brush of some description and basically you can then just brush their trash out. Lacey and Niger are normally quite good and will bring the trash down the far end of the test tube. And in case any of you were worried that that little black thing was a dead ant, as you can see, it's not. It's the remains of some little fly they've had. So we haven't had a casualty. Um, I put the cotton wool back in and they were very quite aggressive, actually. I've, uh, they were coming down and pulling at the cotton and just generally they've made my life a little bit tricky here. So I thought, you know what, let's subdivide the test tube. So this is a piece of silicone drinking straw. Um, you can get it in supermarkets it, with the paper plates, the plastic cups, the party stuff like that. Wrapped with a piece of cotton and you saw that I put the tweezers in the middle of the straw and the outside of the cotton. So I'm holding the straw open. And you can see the problem I had here, look, that all the ants are coming down. And this is why I want to subdivide the tube so that I can try and stop this a lot. And you can get them to retreat to the inner, the inner area so that you can do maintenance on the tube. Um, and what I say is people are always worried. Just be patient. Don't rush it. Um, you can also do this. You can wiggle the cotton a little bit like this. I'm just prodding this ant basically very gently. It doesn't hurt them, but they don't like this movement. It, it disturbs them. And it, as you'll see in a minute, it thinks mm, and, and off it goes back up to the queen and allows me then to slide the um, test tube divider in. Now, this is my test tube dividers. You can buy them actually from ant suppliers and stuff. Um, Mine's a very cheap alternative that works for me, so it's what I use. Um, and just slide that, I'm sorry I didn't get the shot very well lined up, but slide that piece of cotton wrapped around the um, little length of silicone drinking straw about sort of halfway up the tube um, in the empty part so that you've split the empty part into two halves, a half that the ants will live in and an outer half, which they're going to treat a little bit like an outworld. Um, they went a bit mental at first because I'd slid it relatively close to them, as you can see, but that's enough room for them. You can fit a lot of ants in that small room, that small amount of room there. Um, yeah, they went wild, but it didn't take them long to settle down, accept the, the, you know, the new home. And actually, they seemed immediately a lot more comfortable to have it narrowed down like this. They love small spaces. They're much happier in small spaces. And as you can see, they were into the tube fairly quickly and got used to it fairly quickly and were coming in and out after only, well, a few seconds, basically. They were they were quite happy with the tube and like, seemed to like it. You know, they. what you will find is that there's always ants that hang around on the end of the tube just there, like sort of guards that guard just inside the nest. So anyway, once the tube was in, I popped in a little bit of maple syrup um, so that, um, well, it wasn't actually, no, it was the agar syrup again. So yeah, I popped that in um, and it's so much easier now. Look, they're not coming down. They're not sort of threatening the cotton at the end. They're all inside the inner area and it makes feeding into this outer area so much easier. And this is why I advise subdividing your tubes when you're managing colonies in a test tube. And as you can see, it doesn't, you know, they come out, they come out to forage. It's also much more fun to actually watch them in this situation because you can watch the difference between the, the ones that come out to forage and the ones that stay in the nest and how they'll shuttle mouthfuls of sugar backwards and forwards. And, and you do get to see like different behaviours from your ants when you have the test tube divided like this. And it makes it a lot more interesting watching them when they're in a test tube setting. 
Um, so yeah, this is Queen D. This is her progress at the moment. Um, she's got a lot of um, pupa in there. There's about seven or eight pupa and a lot of larvae, um, which are all well fed up. She's, um, she's had some various little flies and protein. Um, they've had a lot of honey. But what worries me is that she hasn't, I, I don't think she's laid any eggs yet. So I'm a little bit concerned. Um, and a lot of you right now, I'm seeing videos and photographs that people are sending me and showing me. A lot of you have come through hibernation with multiple Laceous Niger colonies. And you're making your mind up which one you should keep going forward. Um, what I'd say to you is don't, don't, judge it purely on the number of workers. A, a colony with only six workers could end up being better than a colony with 20 or 30 workers if that queen starts to lay eggs and starts to um, accelerate the colony. Um, a colony that's growing will just now grow exponentially. They'll, they'll basically double each month. Um, so yeah, look for eggs. Look for pupa, look for eggs. You want a queen that's in full production mode. Um, number of workers, as I said, totally irrelevant. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, everyone.